Hello everyone, in this video I want to talk about storage options for both the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5 and talk about whether we can expect to have issues when it comes to uh, storage capacity whether it will be enough space for us to store uh, you know, many games or whether we need to kind of, you know, uninstall from time to time or decide that we need to, uh, you know, we need to buy an external storage space in order to install more games. But of course, there are things, uh, important thing to discuss uh, because there are related details that are important for you to know uh, regarding the storage space on both the console and regarding external hard drives. So let's jump into it. Now, before we move into talking more details about the storage, first of all, the PlayStation 5 comes with the uh, 825 gigabytes custom SSD and the Xbox Series X comes with one terabyte custom um, NVMe SSD. But again, we're not going to talk about performance here, but just about the storage space. Now, there are two options for users. The first thing, of course, is to store the games and the data uh, on the internal storage space. And the other thing is to connect an external storage space. But just keep in mind that you won't be able to store and play games on the external SSD unless it meets certain uh, requirements. Now, the reason is that the external uh, hardware needs to be certified when you, if you want to play games and not just save data is because, well, many games are optimized for the entire platform, not just in terms of CPU and GPU, right? But in terms of the uh, SSD, the built-in SSD. And this is, for example, one reason why we've seen games like uh, Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart, where they're able to take advantage of both the fast GPU and the very, very fast SSD to load uh, levers so fast that they can create kind of a game mechanic with this. So for example, Ratchet and Clank uh, just move through uh, portals, uh, rifts, and they're able to load and change the environment instantly. Now, I don't know how it actually will be, whether there will be kind of a software that actually check the different uh, certification of the hardware, that the hardware can actually talk with the console in order to verify how uh, it's actually going to be used. So for example, if you detect a certified um, external hard drive, you will be able to install games on that hard drive. And if not, we just uh, will be able to uh, store maybe screenshots, saved games, uh, you know, videos uh, that you recorded, but you won't be able to play games on it. Now, before we're gonna jump and talk about which hardware you can find for each console, costs and stuff, first of all, uh, let's talk about, well, why we actually need an external hard drive. Well, basically to store more stuff. Now, it can be things like when you record lots of videos um, and make many screenshots and you know, you want me something maybe to store it on external hard drive and just make sure that the internal hard drive will store just games. So you won't waste this kind of a valuable space for storing media. The other thing is that many players install many games and if you played even on the PS4 or Xbox One, you probably came across it. Sometimes the space is just limited. It even happened to me. When I play on the PlayStation 4, at some point I wanted to install a game and the console told me, well, we don't have enough space. So in order to play the game, I needed to delete something. Now, this become even bigger issue with bigger games and more modern games, especially one that runs in 4K that have lots of high resolution texture. And in general, um, games will just wait more and more in each generation. This is something that is very, very clear. And this means that in the next gen for Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5, we can expect the games to be very, very big. But the thing is that I was searching to see kind of what the average was for the Xbox One, for example, right? So for example, uh, on finder.com, Xbox One, every game installed, I found some information, interesting information. So the average per game, the average size was 10.24 gigabytes, 10 gigabytes. And the average size for major publisher game was 60.9, let's say 17 gigabytes. Now for indie games, it was smaller. The average size of indie games was 2.6 gigabytes. But of course we need to look at the big games, right? If you really want to understand kind of how much space we're gonna need. So let's look at Destiny 2, for example. Now, if you look at Steam, for example, for Destiny 2, we can see that the requirement 
is 105 gigabytes of available space. And when you take into consideration that some games have DLCs and quite a lot of them, it can easily kind of expand that in 50 gigabytes or even more. Now, I also wanted to see, you know, for other games. So I took a look and on Game Rant, I found some really interesting information. So we're going to go over some games of current gen. For example, uh, Do's Axe Mankind Divided, 77 gigabytes. Middle Earth Shadow of Raw, 95 gigabytes. Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, 101 gigabytes. Gears of War 4, 112.3 gigabytes. Call of Duty Black Ops 3, 113 gigabytes. Final Fantasy 15, 148 gigabytes. Whew. Red Dead Redemption 2, 150 gigabytes. Destiny 2 Shadow Keep, 165 gigabytes. Why well, as I told you, it's getting even bigger. Call of Duty Modern Warfare, 175 gigabytes. It's just crazy. Counting Break, 178 gigabytes. Well, uh, as you can see here by these numbers, well, you need for the big games above 100 gigabytes. So if we take those numbers, let's say around 100, you can understand that. Uh, I don't, by the way, I think the actual number of the storage might be a bit less. I'm not sure. Uh, but anyway, there's a limit on how much you can actually store on the drive, especially if you really want many games installed in order to play them you know you know you want to switch between call of duty or chant and clank and you know you know to switch destiny and you don't want to uninstall a big game because again installing it uninstalling a big game and reinstalling it means you need to download it again and for some people it's really really annoying and if you consider the fact that you might be going to play one day this game one day that game you not start uninstalling games just to play you know another game and the thing is that some people just want the big games to be installed because at some point they're going to play them even next week, right? And they're going to always going to be more and more games. So you always want to try new games. You might won't play it for long, but you just want to at least try them. And this doesn't include the free games that you will install and the media that you're going to store your saved, uh, you know, videos, screenshots and stuff. And you need to consider the fact that the games that I mentioned here, uh, are games that for core and gen next gen games that even support 4k well we can expect some games and future games to wait even more now we can expect a kind of a majority of games you know to be around in general kind of around between 60 and uh, you know 100 gigabyte maybe slightly less uh, but we definitely going to see a handful of game that will hit the 200 gigabyte mark easily now, having said that, well, we might have bigger storage, right? For you know, but it will cost you more. So we're going to buy, for example, the PS5 with two terabytes of hard drive. I don't know what options there will be, but we can expect to have different options. But again, as I said, it's going to cost more. Now, that being said, well, we need to understand that well, maybe Sony and Microsoft know something we don't know. Like when I look at 825 gigabytes, it looks like nothing, right? I mean. It's nothing but it looks kind of a relatively small amount of storage space considering how big games are going to be but uh, sony and microsoft are in contact with the uh, developers and they know what the average user uh, is using how many games people install and maybe this is kind of a you know a good amount of space after all if you don't have a lot of space people might buy less games and this is of course counterproductive for those companies they want to sell more and more games well, that's one advantage that cloud uh, streaming, uh, game streaming services have, because you don't need actually to worry about that. But yeah, that's for another discussion. Now, whatever technologies developers use in order to minimize the amount of space, well, we just need to look at the games and their size, right? It's very simple. We don't need to imagine. If we just stick with the current size of games, right? We don't even go with what next gen will have. It's still for a game having 150, 170 gigabytes, even more, well, you can definitely see, and these games that many people enjoy playing, you can definitely see that, well, uh, we might have a problem. I even read an article on uh, GameSpot, uh, it's called Call of Duty Modern Warfare's file size is getting ridiculous. <laughs> oh, what a title. So again, I'm just going to read the line. Modern Warfare on PC currently takes about just over 100 gigabytes of hardware uh, of hard drive space while rigging in at just over 185 gigabytes on PS4 and Xbox One. 
all right that's all we need to know right current gen well let's let's leave that what's going to be next right this type of game many people will play uh and people enjoy playing this one just 185 gigabytes so bottom line is with whatever you wait to look at it analyze it and tackle it well the fact is that there are games that are going to wait a lot especially the big games and ppb many AAA titles uh, open world games you know and uh, big rpg games that we expect to play cyberpunk 2077 oh, oh boy anyway well you see so we definitely for those who actually enjoy installing many games and playing many games well at some point you're gonna get to a, a point where you're gonna have a problem and whatever sony is doing and i mentioned it before maybe they know what they are doing but the fact is that even on the playstation 4 i have this problem i did it myself and i'm a person who don't play many games at the same time and I remember me, when me and my friends play on the PlayStation 4 and we want to install Borderlands. I remember my friends, several of them, time, oh, now I need to uninstall a game. I don't have enough space. I mean, I heard it all the time. So the thing is that whatever Sony and uh, Microsoft know, I think many of us know it's going to be a problem at some point for some of us. All right. So this leads us to talk about uh, expansion, storage expansion, right? Because we know that at some point based on the games that we see now right they're not gonna you don't gonna take call of duty and cut it into half when you bring it to next gen consoles it might even wait more right so what are the solutions out there well both the playstation 5 and the xbox series x uh support uh expansion hard drive now the reason those cause expansion hard drive because this type of hard drive and again there are two categories the expansion ones uh well maybe they're going to call different yeah but that's why i read they are called expansion uh these are the ones that's supposed to have performance similar to the drive the ssd drive that inside the console and these are the type of drive that you'll be able to install games and play games on them so the game data will be read from this hard drive uh, and not the internal hard drive of course unless you install on the internal hard drive uh, but there are other drives which well have lesser performance and not certified for the console but those drives will be able to store only data like screenshot videos uh, save game data uh, but you won't be able to install games on there and play so the game won't read the data directly from these uh, external hard drive this means that you will only be able to install games on the internal hard drive so for example microsoft uh partnered with uh, seagate and to create uh, a proprietary one terabyte uh, seagate expansion drive which will be kind of uh you'll be able to plug it into the back of the xbox series x and that particular drive have the same type of architecture as the internal one so you get the same performance as the internal ssd now the thing that I thought about, and again, this is not something that is official, but if I download the game, let's say I have uh, it's just a standard hard drive, right? Not one certified and you know to work uh, to install games. Whether I be able to download the games, store them on that external hard drive, and then at some point, if I want to uh, is install them to the internal SSD, I'll be able to move them from the external ssd which is not, not again not certified and move them to the internal so and what happens next is if i uninstall un want to uninstall a game whether i'll be able and listen to this to instead of remove the entire game from the internal hard drive to move it to the external hard drive and if i want to play it to make space and if i want to play that game again I can just move that game back to the internal hard drive. This way, I won't be able to down. I won't need to download the game again, right? Because it will reside on the external hard drive. Now, the other thing that I was interested to know, and we soon going to talk about uh, drives um, related to the PlayStation 5. I wanted to know if I bring a hard drive from the PlayStation 4. And I want to play PS4 games, not optimized one for the PlayStation 5, whether I'll be able uh, to use the regular hard drive. Now on Push Square, uh, it's written there, uh, you'll be able to play backwards compatible PS4 games from these devices though. So I think here there they're actually talking about um, the regular drives. So if you actually bring a hard drive where you have PS4 games installed, 
uh, it's just a regular drive because well they didn't have such a you know such a drive that is certified by next gen back then uh, you'll be able to, you should be able to play those uh, ps4 games uh, on the drive so it's not kind of a useless for playing games you know after all oh and by the way the xbox uh, series x will have a slot at the back of the console uh, to add ssd uh, and the same goes by the way to the uh, playstation 5 you also have an expansion bay uh, for kind of off-the-shelf uh, M2 NVMe SSD. But just keep in mind that also same as Xbox uh, Series X, you also need a certified uh, hard drive in order again to match the performance of the internal hard drive to be able to play games on that drive. All right, now regarding to price, well, we don't know the price of the different ones that actually announced, for example, the Seagate for the Xbox Series X, well, if you look at the current uh, Seagate SSD pricing, well, I think we can expect it uh, to cost not less than $200. So again, it's not going to be cheap and it's something that you need to consider uh, as well if you're going to see yourself playing many, many games. Now, I just want to add something. I'm coming from the PlayStation 4 and I had a PlayStation 4 with 500 gigabytes. Uh, but again, I found myself that I was able to kind of, uh, you know, uh, deal with it. I sometimes inst uninstalled games that I, you know, I did just didn't play. So for me, I think one terabyte will be enough, but I'm sure there are going to be many or for, for them. Uh, it might be an issue and you will have at some point uh, to purchase uh, an expansion storage to run, to, to be able to install many games there. But if you know about the option to move games from the main storage to the a standard external storage and back and forth uh, let me know in the comment section below I don't know about that but this can actually be something good right because you're just actually storing this instead of needing to delete it and then it's very fast to move data from one storage to the other when it's locally instead of just downloading everything again all right so this is it for this video I want to hear now what your opinion what do you think about this whole storage thing do you think we have enough space uh, to store games do you think you are the one among the ones we actually need to buy an expensive storage how much do you think those costs uh, well let me know everything in the comment section below and let discuss this topic there thanks for watching everyone consider subscribing to my channel and giving a like if you enjoyed more coming stay tuned cheers